in this conference, I'm going to describe our experience with uh, Sirius and in a project where we are developing a um, smart development environment for infrastructure as a code. Uh, here I represent Atos, but I'm also representing my colleagues in this Sololite project. Uh, despite this, uh, uh, I will try to be much focus on uh, serious uh, as much possible. I need to introduce a little bit in a couple of slides the context uh, and the approach of Solar Light in order to help you to understand why we are here um, describing our experience with Sirius. I mean, how we came to Sirius uh, during the project. So first I will start introducing the, the project from a motivation and approach point of view, and then I will focus strictly in the, those aspects related with the modeling for infrastructure as a code. So I will describe what are the modeling roles and the domain specific languages that we have designed for this purpose. I will uh, go in some details about the role of the semantic systems that um, is driven the entire modeling experience by uh, exploiting semantic reasoning capabilities. And then I will focus on uh, the textual editors that we created by using text text, uh, mostly on the visual editor that we, that I, 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 we created uh, by using Sirius. And this interoperability, interoperability between textual and visual uh, edition. And then I will finalize with some modeling challenges that we are facing and some issues and describe what are our plan for future world in the short term. So first, uh, let me introduce uh, Sotolite. Sotolite is aiming to support the deployment of very complex applications like those that are consisting of multiple services, microservices, or even uh, batch jobs that needs to be deployed within uh, heterogeneous infrastructures across multiple infrastructures that are including HPC, managed by different schedulers, uh, Edge, and uh, cloud and the main purpose of the project is to support trustworthy deployment of this complex application in across this heterogeneous infrastructure so this is what kind of motto for the project and in order to uh, support this approach I mean sorry to support uh, this uh, objective we are adopting the following approach first we are um, leveraging on modeling uh, so we are using model driven techniques in order to describe by using models uh, what are the existing uh, infrastructure resources on those heterogeneous infrastructures? Also, to model uh, the complexity of the, the, the deployment topology for applications, as well as to be able to introduce optimization aspects by modeling those optimizations on concrete um, application components. And last but not least, we are also supporting the modeling of the uh, implementation of operation that are. Uh, managing the life cycle of the different components by adopting Ansible. So this is the modeling part. Once uh, we created those models, from those models we can create the infrastructure as a code. So we can define and create and build uh, images. We can also create the ultimate Tosca blueprint, which is driven the overall um, deployment in orchestrator. But also we can uh, support the automatic discovery of the infrastructure resources that are populating the, the, the modeling repositories. And we are also supporting the validation of the infrastructure of the goal, um, artifacts, including the detection of the smells and the building of all the required Ansible playbooks. And at runtime, we are supporting parallel and resumable deployment with the orchestrator and the dynamic uh, configuration of monitoring for deploy applications, as well as to support autonomic computing at the level of refactoring deployments upon the detection of anomalous behavior. But in the presentation, I will focus on the modeling aspects, which are relevant here in this conference. And I will start by describing uh, what are the modeling roles. First, we have resource expert, who has the expertise to describe the infrastructure resources, uh, describing their types, but in, in by, by creating resource models that are uh, instances of our resource model, uh, the main specific language that we have created, that is borrowing concepts from uh, OASIS Tosca specification, particularly for those types that are described in Tosca. Uh, the owner of the application, the application expert, um, will describe the complex topology of the application deployment by creating abstract application deployment models, which um, are instances of a uh, uh, domain specific language that we have also created by borrowing the uh, concepts from the uh, Tosca template uh, specification. 
uh, the, 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 I will describe this why we are using Tosca as much as possible. Uh, the same way a quality expert can create um, optimization models that will be applied to concrete application components in order to optimize the behavior at the primal level uh, by re optimizing the use of the resources in the infrastructure. And the same application of expert can create um, Ansible models describing playbooks that are implementing the operation in the life cycle of the different application components. Uh, these models are interrelated. Uh, the Astra application deployment models refer to resources at high level, level, as well as to optimization uh, models that can be applied to the components describing within the topology, and as well to the Ansible playbooks that are describing the implementation of the operations of the components lifecycle. Uh, similarly, these Ansible playbooks are also uh, applied in resources when the lifecycle resource needs to be specified. So uh, these two meta models or domain specific languages are being quite close to Tosca specification because out of these models we will create in the infrastructure as a code the corresponding Tosca blueprint and we decided not to be so far from the uh, target uh, specification in order to help the users uh, to get familiarized with uh, these languages that we are proposing. So. Um, for considering those uh, those languages, we created an IDE based on Eclipse, where we are supporting the specification of all those artifacts. But we are strongly rely on a semantic knowledge base, which is acting not only as a repository of all those resources, infrastructure resources, application components, optimization models, and so on, but also are providing us um, with assistance to the user when the user is creating the models by providing contextual information that fits into this particular modeling point, by providing knowledge, knowledge that can be inferred from the knowledge base and so on. So all the references are taken from the knowledge base and um, provided to the user. I, I will show you this in a while. But also is providing systematic validation. I mean, the textual editors and graphical editors are providing syntactic validation, but systematic validation needs to be relied on this knowledge inference provided by the knowledge base, as well as to suggest possible optimization of on concrete components by uh, inspecting the component um, nature, the component characteristics. Uh, so at the beginning, we started by creating textual editor. That was our initial intention. And for that, we adopted um, Xtext and we created uh, using Xtext the different uh, domain-specific language grammars. I mean, they were specified with text text uh, because we consider that the kind of user that will be using these editors will be uh, maybe developers, but also because the textual edition has much better performance in terms of productivity. But of course, the learning curve is steady. Um, um, I mean, the communication skills with textual editors are poor compared to visual editors. I will describe this. Some, I will elaborate on this more when comparing textual versus uh, visual. So we created a textual editor for describing um, deployment topologies, which are based on Tosca. And we are adopting a modular modeling where we can isolate uh, entities within a module that can be imported. So when we are retrieving information from the knowledge base, we are not exploring the entire solution space. We are selecting those models for which we are interested. In the same way, we created an editor for describing resource model, which is based on Tosca type definition. Um, for optimization, um, it was defined a, com a completely new language. Uh, that support the optimization of containerized HPC and artificial intelligence applications. And for Ansible, uh, we support the implementation, I mean, the, the definition of the implementation of interface operation as Ansible playbooks. And this language was, uh, this DSL was also created in the context of the project. So um, apart from the editors, we are supporting uh, uh, by assisting with the knowledge base. By the knowledge base, we are assisting content Context aware model, modeling assistance, not only at the syntactical point of view that is supported by XTEX or by cross references, but also by retrieving uh, information that can be in, um, inferred from the knowledge base. This is uh, provided by the knowledge base at the point where it's required. So we can uh, select what are the possible 
uh, existing nodes that can satisfy a particular requirement, or we can identify what are the properties in the hierarchy of a particular um, component type, or um, I mean, we can con con uh, obtain multiple information um, uh, from the knowledge base that speed up the modeling of the, of the tool. Similarly, we can request the knowledge base to uh, conduct a semantic validation of the model, and the semantic validation will uh, spot uh, possible model deficiencies, uh, errors, or suggestions in order to uh, improve a particular aspect of the model. And in, in some cases, when those options are available, quick fixes are, are uh, offered to the user, so the user can just let the quick fix and apply the, the patch. Uh, similarly, optimization recommendations are also provided. And uh, a, a nice feature is that even if the model is incomplete, the knowledge base can try to complete the model by fulfilling all those requirements that have not been met. So, um, in terms of um, visual editors, then we realize and we also be advised by our reviewers uh, to create visual representation of the model. So, we started by creating using a serious uh, visual representation that was automatically generated out of the XText model. We uh, adopted the XText serious integration facilities. Uh, the model at the, at the beginning was completely uh, read-only, and then is when we created support as well for creating the model with the palette. Uh, so the model can be also created in the, in the canvas, and the models are being synchronized uh, with the XTEX model. And uh, for fine grain edition, we created the corresponding property uh, for base views. So as an example, here I have the AG, where I have a number of uh, ABM models and the corresponding uh, editor, the graphical editor. The graphical editor, in this case, contains a huge number of components uh, that when you click in the, every component, you have the associated property view, and the information is retrieved from the knowledge base. So depending on the property, I mean, the aspect of the model that you are selecting, you will be getting different kind of information that is always retrieved from the knowledge base. Um, similarly, in the, as commented before in the slides, in the textual editor, you can just uh, use Content Assistant in order to get information at the point where you are requesting. So it will be synthetic information about to know what kind of properties you can inject into the model, or you can also get information from the knowledge base. So um, one of the nice aspects of this approach by combining Aztec and Sirius is that you can provide different uh, viewpoints for the same model. The core model is the same, is shared among all those visual and textual editors, uh, but it's a, and some issues with the synchronization that we'll comment uh, later. Uh, but from the communication point of view, you are combining high productivity in the textual editors with the high communication uh, abilities or capabilities in the graphical editors. And also, you can also use the outline, which in case of the X text is a tree base, and in case of the series is a kind of thumbnail uh, view. So if you select a particular uh, here in the outline, when you have selected the textual editor, you can see all the entities that you have. And even if you select one, you can see that one in the textual editor. And in case that you select the visual uh, editor, created by Sirius, you can use the outline in order to uh, navigate through the model. Here I have another example of model that shows uh, other kind of entities, like for instance, policies, not only components nodes. And the, I mean, the, the visual representation offers a huge possibilities for communication. Um, uh, for us, it was a very, very, very good experience to combine both. Um, so, uh, in the next slides, I want to share with you some thoughts about, um, because this is our first experience with uh, uh, Sirius, and then we were facing with a number of issues, apart from the technical issues that you face when you are learning uh, a new framework. Um, first, uh, the first point is that uh, Tosca is not providing any kind of visual standard notation, so you have to uh, invent one by yourself. It's not like UML that provides a visual uh, notation. In this case, uh, we needed to create one. 
uh, so far we had to take decisions about the level of granularity in the visual modeling because the models, the stone models based on Tosca are quite huge in terms of the amount of information that is provided for a single policy or for a single component. And we had to uh, determine what is the amount of information that needs to be uh, rendered in the, in the canvas in the, in the, in the screen. Uh, what information can be just uh, hidden um, and be edited with the form uh, associated form in the properties view. So this was the kind of decision that we needed to take. For instance, in case of policy, we decided to split the policies and separate the triggers in different entities, even if they belong to the same policy and they cannot live outside it. Um, there were also another aspect that we had to take into account that was how to distribute the different uh, modeling entities, how to distribute the connections, because here there are properties that are referring to others, and we decided to use uh, references, I mean, uh, links, uh, but combining this link with icons that explain the kind of link it is. Uh, as well as, for instance, for target filter for uh, triggers in policies, we use edge connections associated with links in order to combine uh, the different components. So these are the kind of uh, decisions that we need to take um, that we would like to learn from you and to, to share with you and also to get your experience and to get advice from you. And another aspect that for us was quite important, um, well, for all these kind of modeling, I was uh, very biased, I mean, by, uh, very influenced by the UML notation and by the, for instance, Papyrus tool, uh, in order to determine how to create, uh, how to design uh, these entities in the, in the visual editor. And another aspect is um, to combine the possibility to inline edition, so you can uh, click on one of those uh, entities um, and type directly what is the, I mean, to, to, name, to name or to change the properties here in, in line with the uh, form-based edition. This is something that's not done. And we have, I, I'm planning to do similar to the uh, Papyrus UML editor that some properties can be edited in line. In terms of non-issues, uh, the main issue we are facing is based on the decision we're taking when we, are, we were creating the textual notation uh, because we wanted to adopt uh, the YAML notation, which is quite popular in the uh, Tosca domain. But this YAML notation has some, some troubles, I mean, some drawbacks because um, it's notation oppositional based. And as soon as you change the notation, um, the, complete, the complete semantics of the model changes, and there is no way for the XTEX engine to uh, figure out what, what, what you mean, I mean, what your, your intention. And even the FETES support um, uh, formatting, I mean, automatic formatting, the automatic formatting is expecting that the model is correct. And if you change the indentation, the model uh, uh, gets uh, wrong. No? For instance, in here I just change the indentation in one single entity. I guess an error because it's not expected to have a type here, it's expected to have something different. So these kind of issues need to be fixed by the user by hand, but when you are creating the model in the, in the visual editor and you want to synchronize with the Xtext editor, um, even if I've implemented the automatic formatting, I'm getting issues with this uh, approach. Sometimes it's working fine, sometimes not. It's kind of random behavior and I need uh, to investigate further in order to to understand why this is happening. It's uh, just requiring the user to fix the saving when, when I create the model in, in the graphical editor. So this kind of text text series model synchronization is working fine, except for this uh, formatting. Uh, and another issue that I was facing was that I tried to use the Ultra and text integration with Sirius inline editors that are here available. So we can select an entity in the canvas and to use the, the associated text editor in order to complete some of those entities without having to use the, the um, properties view form base editor. Uh, but I couldn't make it work. Uh, I tried with the demos that are available in the Ultra repository, I forked it. But unfortunately, with the recent version of Eclipse, it seems that I'm not working quite well. So I need to further investigate what's going on um, and try to, to fix these issues. Because this kind of integration between STEX um, and Sirius is extremely helpful. I think it's a very nice feature and provides a lot of uh, functionality, extra functionality from both worlds. 
um, in well, just to finalize in terms of future work, we are planning to address all these non-issues and to start working in the line edition of the deployment of the models. And for the future, I mean, in just after after the summer break, I'm planning to start uh, trying to migrate uh, this editor, I mean, the series-based editor into the series web, also because we have been requested by the AC reviewers and also within the project. Um, and we are also planning to provide additional visual editors for the other uh, editors, for the other domain specific languages we have created. And, and a nice aspect for me is to explore, to prepare different view representation using serious views of the same model. So for instance, we have here a, a view for uh, deployment topologies, and I, I'm planning to provide the same kind of workflow-based uh, representation for the same model. This will depend on the resource pending for the project or maybe another one. And that's it. Thank you so much for attending, and I will be glad to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you for this presentation. Have you used Java services for your concrete syntax? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. We are using. I mean, I've been using it well from time to time. But the problem with this kind of um, Tosca-based models, they were created from Xtex uh, by using Xtex grammars and what that, with that in intention, not with the intention of creating a visual editor with Sirius. And maybe the decision I taken by that time were not quite well. I mean, quite good decisions for the for the sake of being quite well integrated with uh, Sirius. So sometimes I realize that creating equal queries for what I need to do is a little bit tricky. Uh, so um, typically, I'm using services that simplifies a lot uh, what I need to do. But as much as I can, I, I try to use SQL as well. In your conclusion, I saw you 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 are planning to integrate an, an AADL editor. Yes. In, so, in the web, with the web, with serious web, you mean? Uh, I, I I was just asking if you are planning to use an existing editor and integrate it in your current workbench, or to create a new AADL editor. No, no. I mean, we are using the existing editor that we yeah. have for Eclipse uh, Sirius, and we are planning to migrate it to the to the web using web uh, serious web. But for the other textual editors, we are planning to create the corresponding serious editors. Okay, but they, so they, they are textual based on X text. Next question. Is there a catalog of resources and playbooks? Uh, yes, we are using the knowledge base for storing all those resources and, and playbooks. The models are stored there, but are stored like um, RDF graphs. And in the GitHub repository of the project, we have all those models and playbooks, for instance, available. We have about 80 something playbooks for different Docker and OpenStack infrastructure resources, which are available in the in the project GitHub public repository. Last question: uh, How do you use Xtext for working with visual models? Uh, okay, um, I mean, we are connecting the old design. I mean, the CDU's uh, specification is connected to Xtex uh, by following the approach uh, adopted by Altran. Uh, so, uh, CDU's is saving the model within, I mean, by using Xtex uh, saving uh, infrastructure. So, it's safe into the uh, Xtex uh, notation. That's why we are facing problems with the automatic formatting. Uh, so we just need to create the corresponding hooks between CDUs and, and XTEX following uh, Altran approach. Thank you.